guys. Today we're going to be going over a very basic but really awesome budget way to make a nice field sharpener. And sharpening is one of kind of the problems in bushcrafting because we all run knives, we all use knives, so at some point we have to sharpen those knives. And the problem with that is that a lot of sharpeners are very expensive and or they're really a hassle to take out into the woods with you. Things like the Edge Pro Apex and the Wicked Edge are really nice sharpeners, but you really cannot use them out in the woods uh, realistically. So today we're going to be going over Morse Kohansky's way of making an infield or a useful sharpener that's not necessarily made infield, though you could if you had the things to make infield. Um, but it's something that you generally make before going out into the woods, but it's a very nice and quick, easy option for sharpening your knives and maintaining your knives in the field. So the central three parts to it are some kind of pine board backing. This is just a pine board. The most important part about this is that it is flat. You don't want any protrusions and that's it's a really big deal. You do not want any of that. But these are really easy to get. Just go down to Home Depot and get just a pine board like this. Very basic, you know, piece of pine. And it does not have to be any fancy wood. This literally is just a pine board. So all I did to this was I just batoned it down to the rough size of width of this uh, sandpaper here. As you guys can see, it's roughly the width of this sandpaper. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it just needs to be roughly that. You don't want it gigantic, and you don't want this piece of wood to be a lot larger than your sandpaper, but you also don't want it to be a lot smaller than your sandpaper. So this has been batoned down to the basic amount of this, and like I said, once again, you can do this just batoning it. It requires no specialty tools. And the only other part, and this is kind of my update to this whole uh, system, is that I'm using Gorilla Glue Gel. This is super glue. And what I really like about this stuff is that um, it is a gel and it's super fast drying. It legitimately dries in like under 15 seconds. So it might not do that because it's a little bit cold out here. But if you're inside a warm house like you should be, uh, this will like legitimately dry in 15 seconds. So it's not only very easy to, or it's not only fast drying, but it's also, you guys can see the applicator. It's very, very tiny. And another thing I like is that the, because this is a gel, it's a very liquidy. Uh, glue and so it's very very flat unlike some other glues that come out and they're kind of like a liquid paste this is legitimately a liquid as you guys will see in a little bit so when it comes out in here um, on here there won't be any large bumps or protrusions in the board or, or once this sandpaper is laid down on it so that out of the way let's get on this piece of wood down to size the only other thing you have to do is you know select what grit of sandpaper preferably 800 but I'm just using 600 here and then you want to apply just a handful of glue drops so you guys will see you want to apply just a handful and it actually is coming out a little jelly here because it is so cold outside right now like legitimately it's in the negatives light negatives but still in the negatives so essentially it is coming out a little bit thicker here but i do promise inside a normal house it does come out as a like liquid i was very impressed with it when gluing other things so i put eight here and you know i put you guys saw the different places i put them you don't need to put a whole lot and ultimately you do not want to put a whole lot and then the next thing you want to do is while this glue tears you want to just press down and make sure that you're flattening that glue. So in those glued spots, you want to make sure that you're physically flattening those spots down. And because this is a wet dry sandpaper, which is what you would really want, uh, the wet dry will not get affected by the wet glue. So as you can see, it's beginning to start to kind of harden up. And uh, once again, it's still working very fast. Keep in mind, it is significantly colder out here than what this glue recommends that you should be working with it at. But you can see that it's still setting up even out here very well. And so there it is, it's now glued. I'm gonna give it a little while to settle because once again, it's so cold out here. If it was average temperatures out here, I would just start immediately sharpening this knife. But because it is colder out here, I'm gonna give it a few minutes to set up before we start messing with it.
that quick little look at me just sharpening it. Really the secret to this particular project is remembering that when you have especially a 600 and 800 grit uh, piece of sandpaper here, you want to hit it on the back of this wood. And what that does is that helps remove a lot of the burrs and more of the, uh, just the kind of hanging on the edge. If you guys know what I mean, like the steel will kind of get like that kind of hanging on the edge. And to knock that stuff off, you want to go on the back of your wood and use that to help knock off all that excess uh, steel that's kind of hanging on the very wire edge. And so that will help really refine your edge fast. And once again, this isn't necessarily necessarily a perfect shiny edge but this is very serviceable edge it is very usable and another secret is if you can you want to try and use the wet dry so that you can use uh, things like Windex or different kind of water based things and that will help create slurries of steel and so that will really help uh, with the sharpening process but if you guys want to see here quickly just how sharp we got this knife uh, once again this knife was not dull to start out with but you can see easily here creating feather sticks very easily that's a little big on my behalf sorry about that but once again very easily creating feather sticks and it is actually significantly sharper than when we started out with because this knife well it wasn't dull it was not the sharpest knife I had so that's why I kind of chose it to be the sacrificial lamb here but anyways it came out very sharp and let me know if you guys want to see any more of these kind of budget DIY bushcrafting tips. And I really like this one in particular just for the fact that, once again, it's a very easy system to carry and is very lightweight and very effective for bushcrafting. So anyways, guys, that's it for now. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and I'm out.